Hi everybody, I hope you're well. Today I will read from a book titled Giuliano da San Gallo and the Ruins of Rome by Cami Brothers, published by Princeton University Press. Contemporary architecture prizes originality and with it the idea that creativity thrives on a blank slate. In 15th and 16th century Italy, however, an architect's reputation was made in part on the basis of how much he had been able to steal or borrow from the past. A design was not spontaneously generated, as some architects today might have us believe, but took form in negotiation with precedents and in dialogue with the past. The precedents that carried the great weight in Renaissance Italy were overwhelmingly Roman, but ancient Rome could present a baffling aspect to the uninitiated. Prior to the middle of the 16th century, when printed books by Sebastiano Serlio 1537, Giacomo Vignola 1562 and Andrea Palladio 1570 established a canon of classical monuments and disseminated their images, there were no obvious means of learning about the ruins, which ones might be appropriate models or what they might have looked like whole. Giuliano da Sangallo, 1443-1516, changed all these, providing his contemporaries and followers with a visual and conceptual guide to the monuments of the ancient world. A successful architect closely tied to Lorenzo de' Medici, he established a series of important new Renaissance types, the Patrician Villa in Poggio Acaiano, the Centralized Church in Santa Maria delle Carceri in Prato, and the Florentine Patrician Palace in Palazzo Gondi, Palazzo Cocchi, Palazzo Strozzi and Palazzo Scala della Gerardesca. While most of his built works were in Tuscany, he also designed significant projects for Julius II and Leo X in Rome. All the while, he built up his graphic repertoire, making extensive studies of ancient Roman and early Christian monuments and fragments. Giuliano's Codex Barberini and Taquino Senese 1465-1516, two books of drawings on parchment, one held in the Vatican Library and the other in the Biblioteca Comunale di Siena, record the first thorough attempt to document the monuments of Rome. Falling between the medieval model book and the printed architectural treatise, both chronologically and conceptually, the volumes of the drawings they contain defy conventional classification and explanation. They attest both Giuliano's nostalgia for the lost splendor of Rome and his impulse as a practicing architect to collect principles and models. The coincidence of these interests, which would later manifest as two distinct types, the pictorial view, veduta, and the architectural drawing, may be read in the layers of information included in the images. From Giuliano's use of ink wash as a method of rendering weather stone and his invocations of a fantasy ruined landscape, to his carefully measured and orthogonally represented architectural details. While his purpose was in part to record what he saw, he saw with the eyes of an architect, and his drawings blur the lines between documentation, interpretation and invention. Giuliano's modes of architectural representation were innovative and experimental in relation to 15th and 16th century conventions of drawing. Architectural historians generally agree that conventions of representation were advanced in the context of the building of St. Peter's. However, the tremendous range and vitality of the representational techniques evident in the pages of Giuliano's books suggest that it may have been the desire to represent ancient ruins that drove these innovations. Documentation itself can be a dynamic, transformative force. In seeking to represent a range of spatially complex and ornate monuments, Giuliano developed conventions equal to the task. The way in which Giuliano drew a monument can also signal how he hoped to use it and provides a key to understanding the interplay between antiquarian study and design in his work. Studying Giuliano's drawings of Rome in light of his activities as a professional architect offers insight into these connections. 
He looked to the antique for solutions to problems that he faced with his projects. Thus, his practice shaped his perception of the antique as much as his study of the antique informed his practice. This is evident in the use of the orders, his organization of space, the relation of his interiors to his exteriors, and the deployment of figurative ornament. Many 15th and 16th century architects, from Francesco di Giorgio and Simone del Pollaiuolo to Antonio da Sangallo the Younger and Palladio, erased the effects of time in their drawings of ancient monuments, presenting old and new as though they were equivalent. Giuliano's drawings, by contrast, devote painstaking attention to the damage wrought by weather and history. He makes lavish use of wash, occasionally colored, to render the surface of the stone and its decay and to show the growth of new plants in the crevices. These aspects of Giuliano's drawings may be understood in relation to paintings by such contemporaries as Sandro Botticelli, Filippino Lippi and Andrea Mantegna, who made great efforts to render the passage of time in the backgrounds of their works, exploiting architecture for symbolic ends. But it was not only visual artists who had an impact on Giuliano's approach to the ancient monuments. The architect's attitude towards Rome was shaped equally by the poetic culture of ruins, and in particular by Petrarch 1304-1374 and his followers. Adopting the term ruine to refer to literary remains, Petrarch developed an extended metaphor linking the reconstruction of ancient texts with the disinterment of monuments. For Petrarch and for Giuliano, caught between the impulses of the antiquarian and the creative artist, the project of recovery and imitation of the past was fraught with ambiences. What for Petrarch is a literary image of the author consuming his sources takes on literal meaning for Giuliano in the context of his era, when ruins were used as quarries to fuel new buildings. Giuliano's drawings of Rome invite a consideration of many issues central to Renaissance architectural culture. The architect's relation to the past and the link between the study of ancient monuments and the formulation of new designs conventions of representation in architecture and their relation to pictorial practices, and the diverse functions of drawing. Thus, the drawings illuminate the link between perception, representation and design, demonstrating that drawing existing buildings engage the architect's imagination as the first step in their transformation of what they saw into something new. Finally, the drawings suggest a more inclusive view of classicism than the one we have inherited in their emphasis on the unstable and richly varied qualities of Roman architecture. Ask for the book at your local bookstore. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.